Hi, good afternoon, everybody, and, and welcome to Essentials. Um, thank you very much for joining us this afternoon, um, for which, which is going to be proved to be a fascinating chat. Um, we Today we have Peter Armitage, who's the Group CEO of Anchor and the, Chief, and the Co-Chief Investment Officer. He's going to be tackling a very interesting and difficult subject. With the shrinking JSC, the demands on financial advisors have never been higher. To start looking at alternative investments, private equity, and other and other assets, to help us navigate this world and to guide us to what clients would like uh, would want is uh, Peter Armitage. And um, before uh, uh, Peter starts, I just remind you: if you do have questions, please put them in the Q and A function. And if you would like the CPD point, please stay on for the full hour. If you leave early, unfortunately, you won't get it. So with that, I'd like to hand over to Peter Armitage. Okay, good afternoon, folks. Um, I'm going to chat to you today about alternative investments. Um, I'm going to try and give a kind of a market-related perspective, not just talk about anchor products and services. Uh, but obviously, we are we in the game to a certain extent. There are things that we do and don't do, and we'll share uh, some of that with you. Let's get the presentation up on the screen. Okay, on the assumption that that's all working well. I think um, we call the presentation Coloring Outside the Lines because it's uh, um, there's, there's stuff, the investments and opportunities which are kind of uh, outside of what we would normally invest in. So I think a good place to start is just to take the perspective of what can be earned in what assets around the world. I think certainly um, we should be viewing our clients certainly in a, you know, they've got a reasonable NAV as global investment citizens and looking at things in dollars. And this is the, the, the kind of framework of uh, the long-term returns that uh, we estimate have been earned in different categories of the market. So bonds, um, we think about 6%. If you picture at the moment, uh, from a US perspective, uh, the US tenure is sitting between 35 and 4 And if you, increase, um, if you increase the risk a little bit into credit and the like, we think you should be able to get around 6%. REITs sitting at about eight, <clears throat> shares at 10% in dollars. Uh, and then you, after that, um, and obviously what we've experienced over the course of the last few years, a huge amount of volatility in the investments that are within the lines. Uh, so people who've invested in stock markets have had very anxious times. And that's, that's forced people to kind of look outside the ordinary and the volatile into return and risk uh, payoff profiles that look a little bit different to um, plain vanilla equities. And uh, equities are obviously the, you know, probably the most volatile place to be invested, uh, but certainly do offer some, some pretty good longer term returns. So private equity, and um, you should expect a little bit more than stocks. Uh, you know, what you're doing is tying your money up for longer time periods. Private equity companies tend to place a bit of debt on top. Um, so if the investment works, the return is typically a little bit higher. But obviously the issue there is, the length and commitment of investment. Hedge funds, um, which we'll talk a bit about, are a completely different kind of kettle of fish. And hedge funds in itself uh, don't, uh, you know, there's a hedge fund is can mean many different things. Uh, largely for us, it means a fund manager has a different tool set. Um, so that uh, conservative hedge funds, globally, you'd be looking at the kind of 5 to 8% category. And then you'll get hedge funds that are more aggressive than the market, uh, where they'd be aiming for much higher returns. So it's a category that doesn't have one generic return, uh, but averaging around eight. And then structured products, uh, which is very much part of the alternative product set, is, uh, is an area that we think is particularly attractive at the moment. So um, we, we invest in clients' money in in offshore products yielding between 12 and 18% in coupons that are paid monthly, uh, and we'll take you through that. So this is the global perspective, and obviously SA is uh, in quite a troubled space at the moment. The, the electricity depletion, together with uh, um, the insinuations and, and in terms of the support uh, of Russia and what really came with the Lady R ship, is having a very negative impact on our stock market, on our sentiment, uh, and, and, and especially on the currency. So, you know, there's alternative investments. I think the, <laughs> I always think back to when Nolan Barpana, who runs our very successful fixed income business, joined us uh, seven or eight years ago. 
I said to him that people, you know, wouldn't particularly be interested in uh, the seven to eight percent returns that he's generating. And he joked with me a, a year or two ago post COVID when markets had been very volatile. He said, "Well, how's my seven or eight percent now?" And I think that's really what this is about: is there are different investments outside of the very risky stuff that all of your clients are invested in from a stock market point of view, where the prospective returns are excellent. Um, typically, that does mean. If you you know if if you're looking for that little bit of an extra return, often you you're taking a different kind of risk. Uh, the risk can be term, uh, the risk can be a bit of gearing, but having a proper handle on on that risk, you can create a client profile and um, investor proposition, which we think can look very attractive. So, what alternative investments? <clears throat> um, it's a very broad category, but typically. Um, it's investments, and they might they might have the same underlying as listing uh, investing in a stock. So you know a company could be a listed business, and that's where a lot of your clients' money will sit. Or it could be within a private equity fund, or it could be within a hedge fund, um, or people could be writing notes against that business. So you know most investments are either bonds, property, or businesses underlying, and alternative investments are different. Risk profiles creates it often around the same asset. It certainly does, you know, at, at the moment, um, from a global equity perspective, uh, it's difficult to argue that returns are going to be fantastic over the next 12 months, as, uh, you know, the, the market's run quite hard this year already. And uh, there's been some, you know, some great places to be. But uh, there, there's a, a lot of, uh, you know, probably an impending recession and uh, potential quite a bit of volatility of the next 12 months. From an SA perspective, um, you know, the, the SA economy is, is looking quite troubled. Um, the, the local stock market, there's obviously in, in every set of circumstances, there's opportunity. So, you know, a weakening currency is good for some shares, but for the market as a whole, and if you're in an equity fund, typically they'll be measuring themselves against a market. Uh, which has been quite disappointing this year for, for the reasons that we've identified. So, you know, let's go through the different ways to invest. I think uh, hedge funds globally, if you look at most like Yale and Harvard and the big institutions and most ultra high net worth individuals around the world, hedge funds are typically 10 to 20% of their portfolios. And we'll come around to that. Um, my background is a reflection of uh, South Africa at the moment, where load shedding is taken away the light for a minute or two. So um, then structured products, and really what structured products are is a contract with a bank with a certain investment profile. Um, and we'll take you through some of those. But that's really, um, you know, a bank is, is either creating some protection or some upside um, or giving you a coupon on, on an investment. Next, in, and, and hedge funds and structured products, um, I think, you know, from the perspective of financial advisors are fairly accessible. So a client with a reasonable NAV or investment with you, um, hedge funds are now collective investment schemes, and you can find them on a lot of platforms, and you can diversify a portfolio by investing in them. Structured products, um, you know, the likes of Investec and people that we work with, we'll show you some examples. Um, you know, it, it, they certainly are very accessible if somebody's, particularly if somebody's got a, a share portfolio. We then get into the private equity space. Private equity is typically for the, the high net worth individual. Um, private equity funds generally have lockup clauses. Um, you're often putting your money away for three, five, seven years. So that's uh, probably, you know, much more at the niche end of what people are investing in. Although, you know, globally you can invest in listed listed investments, which have uh, private equity funds as the underlying. Then as interest rates have uh, increased around the world, and the world is obviously in a very different place to where it was 12 to 18 months ago, it was, it was very difficult to earn any kind of return when you weren't invested in equity markets. Um, private debt has become a very, very um, kind of popular global alternative investment. So if a bank is going to lend you money, you know, if our business was to expand in the UK, uh, we'd probably land up paying now about 8% in pounds. Uh, or if I went over there and I wanted to borrow some money to buy a house, um, you know, I'd be sitting in probably the, the 6 to 7% category, depending on my liquidity and balance sheet. 
Um, private debt is a space where you know people are at the top end of the capital stack or people who can't access capital for a time period. Um, so, for example, we make use of a fund offshore um, which funds people's residential investments where they can't get money from a bank for a time period. So, for example, if I went to the UK and I wanted to buy a house, uh, it would probably take me a year or two before I'd be able to set up the profile and the track record to be able to borrow from a bank. Um, but I've got a net asset value, and these private debt funds would lend me money kind of in the region of the, 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 the 7 to 10 percent category. So there's now funds. Uh, we, we use uh, the Westbrook Yield Fund. That yield is now running at 9% in pounds. And that's 9%. Um, you know, the, the risk is theoretically higher. But I think uh, the Westbrook Fund has made over 100 investments and, and not one has gone bad. So the um, you know without taking too much risk, you can earn some pretty attractive yields offshore. And if you compare that with prospective equity returns, that's, that's particularly attractive. Um, then Westbrook itself has a, a fund which, um, which then does private debt, but also includes some equity in the equation, and they're looking to get 12% plus. Then you get into infrastructure assets, um, so solar, wind, et cetera. Uh, and there's lots of people out there proposing different, uh, different investments, different platforms, and, uh, and you know, kind of different investment opportunities. So I think that kind of captures the, the, the universe of alternatives, and we'll try and run into, uh, run into these in more detail. I think one of the things to stay up front is there's obviously a huge amount of cost sensitivity uh, to investments, and alternative investments, because they are typically smaller in size and much more specialized and have more cost in, in developing, uh, they, they tend to have a higher fee and often a performance fee, which really the managers have to put in place in order to create a business. So once you get into the space, you have to have the mindset of understanding that there might be a, a higher TER. So to put that in context, a, you know, a hedge fund manager who might want to limit his uh, hedge fund um, at, say, a billion rand, his one, one and a half percent fee is uh, 15 million rand. That pays his running costs and the salaries of um, you know, the three or four analysts and the back office team and the like. So he's not really making money out of the, the asset management fee over time. And he so often sits with like a 15% performance fee. And that's the only instance in which he makes money. So if you compare that to a really big asset manager with a few hundred million rand of assets under management, the, you know, the 50, 60, 75% basis, uh, basis points charge is more than enough for him to make a huge amount of profit. So, you know, I'm just trying to explain often where it's not userous for a hedge fund manager to, to have a fee which has a performance fee component. The business model is very different. And they're often returning something which is a lot more specialized and has a lot more cost. So one of the things you need to kind of weigh up is liquidity and volatility. And I think, you know, as we said at the beginning, the, the equity market has been very volatile. And we certainly have a lot of clients and a lot of financial uh, financial advisors looking for investments for their clients where the volatility is lower um, and you know especially sitting with somebody who's 60 65 uh, they've earned their last salary and um, that they, they can't really stomach the ups and downs of the stock market and that's where alternative investments can play a pretty nice role so Volatility on, on stocks is obviously, you know, right up there in the highest. Uh, bonds are also fairly volatile. Um, if you look at last year, bonds didn't provide the protection that one expects from a global perspective. Um, so structured products tend to have less volatility, a much more predictable and smooth outcome. Um, but you're, you, you often have to give up on liquidity. So as you'd appreciate, something like the private debt uh, opportunity that I talked about, um, you know, you have to lock your money up for 12 to 18 months because obviously that fund manager is lending out money to opportunities where people want some money at least for a reasonable time period. So these are the kind of things you have to balance. Um, but we've been quite successfully with financial advisors being able to put together a portfolio of alternative investments for people, um, which, which have got a very nice steady outcome and is often what clients are, are looking for. This is just a, um, 
a picture of uh, the global investment universe. Um, and you can see that the alternative investments are certainly growing in size as a proportion of the assets out there. If you look at the end of 2022, uh, traditional assets about 100, 147 trillion and alternative assets coming in at 26. So the share of alternatives as a percentage of total assets globally continues to increase. And that's because of the attractiveness of the asset set. And uh, some pretty nice compound returns coming through, which we'll talk a bit more about. So, um, you know, part of the alternative uh, asset argument and debate is active versus passive. I think it's generally being accepted out there these days that there's, there's, there's room for, uh, for passive and active management. Passive is where you're buying indexes, you're buying the average of everything. Uh, but passive investments, you know, you'll tend to have exactly the same volatility as most funds will have. And active management can step in and reduce the volatility, create a slightly different risk return profile. So, you know, we think there's a need for active management. Um, price overshoots are becoming more common. Uh, often shares on the stock market are going up or down 20% in a day. Uh, and, you know, for example, in the hedge fund world, guys can take much smaller positions or take derivative positions on shares where they're not exposed to the same level of volatility. Uh, passive management also is, is concentrated in yesterday's winners because those are, you know, always the biggest parts of passive indices. Uh, and, and we always believe that uh, active management gives you the opportunity to, to invest in tomorrow's winners rather than just today. So more focus on selection, uh, adapting to market conditions, and control over the portfolio and exposure. So a typical hedge fund, you know, whereas a long only fund would, would have between 80 and 100% exposure to the market. Hedge funds, you know, a fairly a kind of normal hedge fund would tend over time to have between 40 and 70% exposure to the market, so less volatility and not necessarily, not necessarily um, you know, gunning for the with the, the, you know, the, the, the super returns and capturing the 30% in the odd year that it happens, but also not suffering the, the same sort of drawdown as one could have experienced in 2008 or 2020. So, you know, just a reminder of, uh, you know, what you're exposed to out there and, and, you know, making the point that alternative investments are more conservative investments typically than, uh, than the kind of investments that most guys are exposed to. So, you know, global equities in the GFC, the 58% drawdown to four and a half years to recover. Global high yield bonds, 35% uh, drawdown, um, corporate bonds, 16%. So it's within the context of the volatility that people have to be able to stomach where a portion of alternative investments can make a lot of sense. So looking at the hedge fund world, which um, as we identified at the beginning is one of the, uh, one of the alternative uh, investments that one can invest in. <clears throat> and going back to 2015, um, hedge funds were unregulated. Uh, they weren't that transparent. You didn't know exactly what you were buying. But the hedge fund world, and if you look at the South African hedge fund universe, they've actually delivered fantastic returns over the course of the last three and five years. Uh, they're now uh, regulated by Cisco, the same le level of regulation. So while the fund manager has a bigger tool set, is restricted in terms of how you can use those tools. Uh, the costs and fees are fully disclosed. You should expect to see a fund with a higher cost um, because the fund manager is running is typically running a much smaller, uh, smaller pool of assets. And, uh, you know, you see the returns reported net of all fees. And you've got uh, fact sheets and MDDs which can control all the information. So in this presentation today, I've, I've pulled quite a few slides from different players out there. And as I said, this isn't just about telling you about an anchor product. It's trying to do an educational on uh, an entire asset class. So this is a fund that's done particularly well, and I'll show it on the ranking tables, is one that we have an interest in, which is the Rainbow, the AG Capital Rainbow Fund. And this is, this is kind of um, one of the most important, I guess, one of the best ways to understand what a fund manager is trying to achieve. So, you know, the fund manager of this, Richard Arneson, is a very conservative guy and um, gunning for regular positive months. <clears throat> uh, this fund probably won't capture the, you know, if you have a 30% year in equity markets, it's not going to capture that, but it also doesn't have the downside. 
So these are the months, and this is where they're targeting, between 0 and 2%. So um, you, know, you want to capture as many of those. And most importantly, if you go down to the really negative months, very few of those are captured. So it's about consistent, uh, regular returns um, without the anxiety that stock markets bring. So I've pulled the last SA Hedge News uh, South African Long Short Equity Funds. And I've circled here, uh, you know, the funds that have annualized over 15 or 16 percent over the course of the last three years. And that's fantastic returns. You know, in that same time period, the equity market has been uh, in the single digits. So quite a few of the guys achieving 15% uh, compound returns um, over the last three years. You see the Fair Tree Assegai Fund, uh, you know, fund that's getting that kind of return. You've got to understand it properly because that's, you know, you, you have to take some quite big bets to do that to get things regularly right. But a fantastic track record. Um, Oyster Catcher, the Anchor Stable Fund, which, you know, we, we run a very conservative hedge fund um, with a 15-year track record that's compounded at 16% over the last three years. Uh, that's India, that's the AG Capital Rainbow Fund that we talked about. So, if you know, if you're able to very carefully pick your fund manager and be comfortable in his ability to manage money, these are the kind of prospective returns that are in place there. Um, obviously, one of the ones that's uh, Peregrine and 361 are two of the most established players out there. You can see 361 12.5% uh, over the course of the last five years. The top two on this table over five years is Fair Tree Asagar at 27 and the AG Capital Rainbow Fund at, at 16. So, you know, the, the and, and these are typically on average much lower risk than equity markets. So you can see quite a nice and attractive uh, return potential. This is the Rainbow Fund that I talked about, the, the, the monthly returns. Um, and you can see, you know, very, very few, um, you know, kind of four to five negative months at the most. And one of the, you know, the best attributes is in something like 2018, where the market was down 8% and up 17. So this is what, you know, this is the kind of fund that we'd be looking to invest in. Accelerator fund has the same kind of objectives, um, where independent of the market conditions, because the guys can go long and short, they're producing the returns. From an anchor perspective, um, we have a we, we we run our hedge fund strategy out of London, looking at local and in emerging markets, um, and we've really got three access points to our hedge strategy: uh, the stable fund, which sits between twenty and fifty percent long, so by definition, and you're guaranteed with the fact that it's uh, um, you know going to be pretty conservative. That's been going since two thousand and three. Um, and provided investors with a very nice profile, irrespective of market conditions. Um, and then we also have a fund which includes emerging markets. And I think, um, you know, that there's a strong argument. And if you, you know, in any asset class to diversify, and I think because of what's happening to the SA market, it's nice to have the potential to invest in offshore markets as well. We then, so that's kind of the hedge fund space. I think there's... Uh, you know, it's worthwhile investing some time. And, and you know, I, I really think for a local investor, having a component of hedge funds in a portfolio makes a lot of sense. Um, can provide a nice base and, and kind of solid foundation to a portfolio that isn't going to suffer the same uh, volatility as equity markets. You then get into the structured product world. And structured products are really where banks can write contracts and have different investments and profiles and, and do a contract with you. So structured products can be a capital protection with, and typically, you know, you're writing two contracts either way. So if, you, if your investment is capital protected, often you're giving up a little bit of the upside. Um, if you're, you know, and if you're limiting, if you're prepared to take a little bit more downside, uh, you know, then the guys will give you an option at the top. So you can be geared to a market. So structured products are a broad spectrum, uh, but I think the, you know, we've certainly helped a lot of financial advisors identify, and it comes down to a, a, a great provider. Um, so Anchor doesn't write the structured products themselves, but we've got relationships with the best players out there who uh, who be happy to write these things. So what this quite complicated slide shows is uh, structured products pay off profiles. 
Uh, and at the moment, we we are investing quite a lot of our offshore client money in the high net worth space uh, with financial advisors into what's called reverse convertibles. So you have a basket of shares, and as long as they don't go, go down 40%, um, you can achieve a very nice coupon off them. And because they're derivative instruments, the inputs into the pricing of them are generally a combination of interest rates and volatility. So because interest rates are significantly higher than they were over the, uh, a year ago, um, these guys can now write products and give you contracts, which, which generate some really nice returns. The other input is volatility. And while volatility and uncertainty is higher, um, that also impacts the returns. So when interest rates are high and volatility is high, you can create structured products. And you know we, we, we've got some profiles and models which are generating kind of between 12 and 14% per annum in dollars. And that's a coupon that's paid out monthly. Um, the conditions aren't always that conducive. So you know when interest rates were low and volatility was low, you were coming out at uh, much closer to CPR type returns. So I think the important thing in the structured product world is, you know, understanding the conditions, working with a professional company who can identify which structured products to be invested in at which points in time. So this is, you know, while hedge funds, I think, can, can uh, have a place in most investors' portfolios if they are diversifying across a few funds, this obviously starts to become more, um, more specific to the, the individual client. Um, so this is just a, an example of a, of a portfolio that we're running at the moment. So for investors who are happy to take exposure to these shares, uh, we've been generating coupons for clients of between 17 to 20 percent. Um, you know, these presentations are too short to get into the detail of it. Um, but these are coupons that are paid out monthly. So kind of one and a half percent per annum coupons. Um, and, you know, a, a, a nice addition to a portfolio and to create some diversity uh, and exposure to what's what's out there in the investment world. I then, uh, you know, asked the investor guys who we also use from a structured product point of view to give an example of a of an auto call. So, again, just a different profile. So, an auto call is typically so the one that I've got on the screen here, the in investor stocks global select dividend hundred auto call. Uh, it's a five year product but it can be redeemed at the end of each year. And if the market is positive, so in this instance, they, um, they, they're they using the, the, the dividend 100. If it's positive at the end of each of any of the years, um, you get an 11% per annum in US dollars. If it's positive at the end of one year, two years, three years. And if it's positive at the end of one year, you structure product over and you can start again. So, you know, there's obviously a lot of intricacies to these things, and uh, we'd like to work through examples with people. But this is, uh, for a client who doesn't want to take risk, um, this is a nice product. It's capital protected. Um, so, you know, the guy puts in 100 rand, and uh, if the market is positive at any of the next five years, he's getting 16% in rands or 11% in dollars. So... Uh, the, the structured products are best explained by examples, and these are two of the examples that uh, I thought were most apt and are pretty attractive. We then get into you know, alternative investments, um, typically investments which aren't in the listed world. So, And there's, there's some really interesting stuff that pops up in what's worth while staying in contact with people who've got expertise in this area. So he has a... Um, and, and obviously, the, you know, there's, there's some very proactive and smart investment guys out there who package opportunities um, to take advantage of uh, tax breaks and the like that are out there. So many of you will be familiar with the 12J investments um, universe, which, which ended a few years ago. And now the, you know, the government's come out and given you 125% tax deduction on solar investments for companies. So there have been a few guys, Westbrook being one of them, We've created a solar opportunity fund uh, where they gear it up and effectively get, um, you know, if you invest a million rand, you can get a million rand back in tax over the course of the first year and then get a, a, a yield on the investment uh, thereafter. So for the right investor who uh, who's in the right tax position to take advantage of it, 
I'm not going to go into massive detail here. Um, there are, you know, the, the government often comes out with tax rules to motivate certain behaviors. And, um, you know, there's guys out there who create funds which play into uh, what government's trying to achieve and pass that opportunity on to an investor who finds the, the risk profile attractive. So that's, you know, an example of, um, of some structured products that are out there. I think one of the, well, the, the alternatives that are out there, one of the um, one of the more difficult things, and I think why financial advisors tend to avoid it, is it's, it's complex and difficult and, you know, you've got to, um, I, I guess, have some quite special expertise and knowledge in order to take advantage of the space. So I think, you know, if one's investing in... Um, traditional markets which come with a much higher level of volatility a good managed fund or an Alan Gray equity fund or a coronation um, you know you, you you've you got some comfort that they're not going to be too far off the market uh, great track records great teams uh, once you get into the alternative space it's a little bit more difficult because the teams aren't that well known the businesses tend to be more niche uh, but there are some players who've been out there for long time periods uh, 10 15 year track records and their businesses that, uh, you know, from an anchor perspective, we, we, we guide a lot of people in terms of diversified portfolios. Um, and I think it's it's important knowing what you don't know as well. I think the in, in, in the anchor business, we do have some alternative products and we run some hedge funds, but uh, they have quite specific objectives. And there's other hedge funds and other products out there which, uh, which you know, kind of offer different investment profiles. So... Once we talk about access, we've you know we we've been scratching our heads for for a while in terms of how to include alternative investments in an investor's uh, investment profile in a more simplified fa fashion. You know, so if a guy's got a, a one, two, five, ten million rand investment portfolio, there's often minimums on these investments, and it's quite difficult to get a diversified portfolio of um, of alternative investments. So fairly recently, a few months ago, we, we created a alternative fund, which is one entry point to give exposure to a range of alternative investments. And I think also, you know, there's quite a few alternative investments, which are specific investment opportunities for, um, uh, for clients. It might be uh, participating in a private equity deal. Uh, we've recently... Um, helped some clients and financial advisors get into uh, a U.S. fiber investment. Some ex-dimension data directors have have very successfully invested in um, in fiber and Bumatel in South Africa. Um, they've expanded into the U.K. and um, achieved fantastic returns there. And they've started a U.S. venture. So that's the kind of private equity opportunity where, if they get it right, you know, clients will make three, four, five times their money. Uh, but that kind of investment is 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 only accessible by really high net worth individuals. Um, so we've created a fund which attempts to invest in and garner some of those opportunities. Um, but because it's a unit size product, a guy with a much smaller amount of money can get access to those kind of returns and payoff profiles without um, you know without having to invest one or two or five million rand. So this is just an example. Again, as I said, I'm talking about some of our products and, and others out there to try and give a, an objective viewpoint. Um, but our alternatives fund, and I think you're going to see quite a lot of this going forward in South Africa. I think the um, South African investment trends tend to follow what's happened around the globe. Um, we tend to be about three to five years behind. And as I said, most high net worth individuals are increasingly having investments in alternatives as they become more sophisticated and accessible to investors. So the, you know, the fund that we put together, we want a stable return profile. And I think, you know, typically once one gets into alternative investments, that is our general objective. And that's to give a profile which is more stable and possibly won't capture all of the upside uh, than equity markets, which, which has created a lot of stress over the course of the last few years. So this fund we put together um, is a balanced mix of different alternative investment solutions. Um, the, the, the underlying funds or investments have got their own fees, so there's no additional management fee at the top. 
Um, so, you know, the guys aren't double dipping. With the objective of a stable 10 to 15% return profile with some upside potential. Uh, and, you know, and we think for, for most investors, and, and certainly given what guys have experienced over the course of the last few years, if you could give them a fair band of certainty in terms of a 10 to 15% return profile, uh, and some of the smaller investments, it, it, you know, have got some quite nice uh, upside, uh, that's pretty attractive. So one entry point into quite a few alternative investments, um, and then also the opportunity, like I gave with that US fiber opportunity, to put five or ten percent into specific opportunities, which um, are really too big or too specialized for guys to be able to invest in themselves. So this fund, um, it's it's got weighting fifteen percent in a global macro fund. 15% in that rainbow fund that I talked about, 15% in anchors to uh, domestic hedge funds, and then kind of 10 to 40% in some of the other opportunities that we find out there. It might be in private debt. We talked about that becoming a you know, much bigger opportunity globally. And right now, as we identified this, because of high interest rates and high volatility, um, structured products, uh, we, you know, we've got a, a quite a conservative portfolio with a running yield of 12% in US dollars. So you can see it's just creating something pretty different, um, something with a different profile, something with a different payoff outlook. Uh, and, you know, importantly, I think with all of this stuff, I think here there's, this is probably 65% global. Um, you know, not uh, in, we, we shouldn't be restricting our investors just to South African investments as the South African outlook becomes quite cloudy. So that's the um, that's the presentation, which I've tried to keep to thirty five or forty minutes. The um, the you know just to share some of the other experiences from a structured product from an alternative perspective, um, and talk about some other providers. So you know we, we we've been having quite a few conversations with a company like Sardel, um, it, offshore, which. And, and, you know, we might well be doing something with them for them to help us with our global hedge fund and, and hedge fund investments, where they've got quite a big proportion of their, um, their global investors' money in a fund of funds, so across a range of different hedge funds. I think like all of these things, you know, we start looking at equity markets, and uh, we then have to pick shares. Uh, then ETFs and passives begin, and there's lands up being more ETFs than there are shares. Uh, then there's unit trusts on top of them. And I think in South Africa, there's now quite a few more unit trusts than there are in underlying instruments um, kind of uh, collecting them. And so in, in the financial services world and in this in this industry, um, you know, the financial services professionals are always try and trying to find ways to package and create different profiles. So the, you know, interesting space we think is the, the global hedge fund industry. Um, but that's really very difficult for you to access from a South African point of view and creates, you need some quite specialized knowledge. So, you know, to give you an idea, and there's, you know, there's nothing on the table right now, but it's, that's the kind of thing we trying to access for clients to give them the ability to buy one instrument in a, in a global hedge fund product. Um, and there, you know, as I said, right at the beginning, guys are gunning for and trying to achieve that kind of six to 10% US dollar return but without the anxiety and volatility that comes from being invested in equity markets, where you could probably get a little bit more over time. Um, so that's the world of alternatives. I think alternatives have become a lot more on the radar screen over the last two or three years as a result of two things. One is the volatility that's been experienced in stock markets. So people have been prepared to look a little bit further and to say if there's a if there's a smart team or guard there who can give me a more stable return profile, that's attractive and I'm prepared to consider it. And the other thing that's changed alternatives quite significantly is interest rates. Uh, you know, if you can earn now in South Africa, our core income fund, I think, is generating about 9.5, 9.6% running yield. Um, globally, you can invest in, um, in fixed income and get 5 or 6%. Uh, so suddenly it's it's a lot more um, private debt funds and private equity funds and, and the like. There's a lot more to play with because you can earn a lot more on your money without taking the risk. 
So I think the investment world has changed quite dramatically over the course of the, the last 12 to 24 months because of some of the characteristics that I've, uh, that I've been talking about. Um, and the, the world of alternatives certainly is something that um, we've been helping our clients and financial advisors with, and uh, something that's definitely worthwhile understanding more about. And one can do it in quite a simple fashion. Um, and as we've shown you, we've, we've created a fund which enables, enables people to buy one unit in something. Um, but if you know for bigger clients, you can certainly um, you can certainly uh, that you really like out there. And there's there's guys like ourselves. Uh, uh, Peregrine have got fantastic track records, and you should be quite comfortable. All right, everyone. We we. Uh... We, uh, unfortunately, load shedding seems to have knocked out our internet on that side. So, unfortunately, I think we are going to have to have to cut the session a little bit short. Um, but I want to thank you for, for for joining us. I'm sorry to have to have done have to have done this. What I will do, I am going to I'm going to take the questions that you have asked, and I will get back to all the people that have asked questions via mail. Um, and I'm sure Pete will do that. Um, so at that note, I'm going to I'm going to finish today's session a little bit early. Um, thank you for attending, and apologies on on our side for the internet going down on Pete's side. Um, it's certainly not the way we'd want to end. But everyone that has asked a question, we will get back to you. Thank you very much for attending. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you.